I played my fair share of racing games on the old Xbox, but one of my favourites was Burnout 3 from 2004. 20 years later, and you know it still holds up. I do have some extra special nostalgia towards the Burnout series in general. Being a lowly QA tester for Electronic Arts back in the early to mid noughts, I did work on the series. Burnout was a pretty popular franchise back then, and it's a real shame it seems to have completely fallen to the wayside these days. The series took the novel approach of being a racing game where crashing out is a part of the fun. Perhaps inspired by the likes of Destruction Derby 1 and 2, but well, I think we can surely all agree that Burnout did it much better. Burnout 3 Takedown is the first title in the series to be published by Electronic Arts. The previous two instalments were published by Acclaim Entertainment, and they're rather questionable advertising. My first Burnout game was Point of Impact on the old GameCube, and still quite fond of that one actually. But there's no denying that Part 3 felt so much more exciting, with the racing being even faster and played more aggressively. The handling felt great, and even now it's a very easy game to jump back into. The general concept for the series has largely remained the same. Your reckless driving skills are rewarded by steadily refilling your boost meter and increasing your speed. You get a real rush just weaving in and out of traffic. Burnout 3 changes up the boost system, chaining your boosts has been removed and you can now use the boost button at any time. The boost bar itself can now be increased or decreased and this is where the new takedown mechanic comes into play. Successfully taking down an opponent extends your boost meter, whereas crashing out slightly decreases it. If you crash out, which you almost certainly will, the impact time gives you a small window of opportunity to dish out some potential revenge. There is a huge world tour to make your way through. Besides the standard race mode circuit, there are a variety of different events to participate in. The road rage mode, where you are required to take down a specific number of opponents, was always one of my favourites. And the crash mode from Burnout 2 also makes its return, with the goal to unleash the most collateral damage as possible. Almost half of the world tour is comprised of the crash mode. And yes, they are fun, but I just usually wanted to get them over and done with so I could get back to the actual racing. I think the difficulty is mostly fair. Going for some of those gold medals could be quite challenging, and there is a ton of content here. Maybe too much, actually. You are constantly awarded new cars, earn achievements, unlock special events, it just keeps going. I remember Burnout 3 took me months to see it through to the end, and there's a good 20 to 30 hours worth of content here. Unsurprisingly, no real car brands are represented here. But that's not to say Burnout 3 didn't still receive the full backing of big electronic arts production values. Fully voiced in-game commentary provided by DJ Striker. I can't say I'm really a fan personally, but you do at least have the option to toggle him on and off. After you suffer through an unskippable tutorial, that is. I'm sorry, he's just no Ridge Racer announcer, but then again, who is? The graphics really did look fantastic for their time, looking a lot more bright and colourful than EA's other racers. And a fully licensed soundtrack. It's a very special feeling ripping your way through opponents, tearing up the raceway while the likes of Franz, Bernard Ant, and the Ramones blast in the background. This soundtrack is very 2004. Oh, take me back. But I must give some credit to the original Burnout composers, Steve Emony and Stephen Root. Burnout 2's soundtrack is vastly underrated, and while their music for Part 3 went unused, it was later included in the later Burnout installments. And speaking of those later Burnout titles, they just didn't really seem to grab me quite as much as Part 3. I do often see a debate online between Burnout 3 and its follow-up, Burnout Revenge, tied for the best of the series. I think I still gotta choose Takedown, personally. I'm just not a fan of the new traffic check feature. Just ramming into oncoming cars took away a lot of the challenge. I really don't like that new crash mode, it just overcomplicates what should be a very simple fun mode. And I'm just not a fan of that gritty 2005 style yellow and browns. This was a really disappointing game to me back then, but I'll admit I have warmed up to it a little bit over the years. It's still got that nice sensation of speed, and if anything it feels more like a car combat game. It's good, but no, it's all about Burnout 3 for me. And I still really like Burnout 2 actually, it feels a lot more of a pure arcade racer. Sadly, only Burnout Revenge and Burnout Paradise are currently the only two Burnout titles that are backwards compatible with the Xbox Series X. 
The Xbox 360 version of Revenge, that is. I should probably upgrade mine. It is a shame Burnout 3 isn't more readily available. Perhaps there's a licensing issue with the music. Wouldn't it be great if we had a HD trilogy pack of Burnout 2, 3 and Revenge? Well then, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed a little look back at Burnout 3, one of my favourite arcade racers. Unfortunately, I'll have to put the channel on a little hiatus while I'm off travelling, but I'll be back again towards the end of October. I'm sure I can put out a few updates with a couple of video shorts, so look out for those. So thanks for watching, and see you all again soon. Take care.